السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ہاؤ آر یو آل ہوپ آل آف یو ول بی فائن آئی ایم میم ارول سر فرام پشاور ماڈل نوشیرا کیمپس ٹوڈے از دا سیکنڈ لیکچر آف کیمسٹری فار گریڈ ایٹ اینڈ گریڈ نائن آف یونٹ نمبر ون فنڈامنٹلس آف کیمسٹری وی ہیو آل ریڈی اسٹڈیڈ دیٹ واٹ از مین بائی کیمسٹری ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس دا برانچز آف کیمسٹری کیمسٹری از فردر ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو ایٹ مین برانچز آف ایٹ مین برانچز وچ از آن پیج نمبر فائیو نمبر فرسٹ فزیکل کیمسٹری آرگینک کیمسٹری ان آرگینک کیمسٹری اینالیٹیکل کیمسٹری انڈسٹریل کیمسٹری نیوکلیئر کیمسٹری بایو کیمسٹری اینڈ دا لاسٹ ون از انوائرمنٹل کیمسٹری دیز آر دا ایٹ مین برانچز آف کیمسٹری وی ول ڈسکس فرسٹ فزیکل کیمسٹری اور فزیکل کیمسٹری وٹ از فزیکل کیمسٹری لک ایٹ دا ڈیفینیشن فزیکل کیمسٹری کنسرن ود دا ریلیشن شپ بٹوین دا فزیکل پراپرٹیز آف آر سبسٹانسز الانگ ود دا کیمیکل چینجز ان دیم What does it mean by it? It means physical chemistry show the relationship between the physical properties of a substance and composition. Physical properties is depend on the composition of a substance. When the composition of a substance change, then the physical properties will be changed. Phys- what are physical properties? The melting point, boiling point, odor, color, densities, all these properties are changed. included in physical properties these properties will depend on the composition of a substance when the composition change when they undergo a chemical change and the physical properties will also change let's take an example of water that the composition of water is h2o in the melting point boiling point all the properties will depend on the composition of water like the uh, the melting point of water is 0 degree centigrade boiling point of water is 100 degree centigrade and the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube all these properties will depend on the composition of water when the water undergo a chemical change when there is change in the composition of water then the all the physical properties will be change beside this various laws of chemistry like law of conservation of mass charles law boys law we will discuss all these law in physical chemistry Now the second one is organic chemistry. Look at the definition study of those compounds which contain carbon and hydrogen called hydrocarbons and their derivatives. What does it mean? It means that in organic chemistry we will study all the compounds which contain carbon and hydrogen and their derivatives. The compound of carbon and hydrogen are called hydrocarbons like methane, the gas we use in our home for cooking purpose. The composition of methane is carbon. CH4 mean one carbon and four hydrogen that's why we call methane a hydrocarbon and their derivatives mean all the compound which are derived from hydrocarbons are called derivatives of hydrocarbon like aldehyde ketones and alcohol hydrocarbons are also called organic compound why we call hydrocarbons in an organic compound because the origin of all these compound are the living organism let's take an example Fossil fuels uh, include coal, petrol, natural gas, etc. Origin of these compounds are living organisms. When the dead bodies of plants and animals undergo decomposition under high temperature and pressure, after millions of years, these dead bodies are converted into fossil fuels. That's why we call this compound organic compound because the origin of these compounds are living organism and the organic is derived from organism. Beside this, uh, following are the few uh, examples of uh, organic chemistry in our daily life. Like all food are organic compounds which contain carbohydrates, proteins and fats. The food we eat like potato, rice, wheat, all these substances contain organic compounds like in the form of protein, fats and carbohydrates. Second one, petroleum is the source of fuel and starting material for the plastics, fabrics and dyes etc. It means, uh, as we know that we use petroleum for the, um, um, petroleum as a source of fuel but beside this we use petroleum as a starting material for the synthesis of plastic, fabrics, dyes and various plants etc. in the industries. Now the third one is inorganic chemistry. Look at the definition. In inorganic chemistry, deal with the study of all the elements and compounds except hydrocarbons and their derivatives. It means that we will discuss the properties, structure 
composition and reaction of all the elements of periodic table and their compounds except hydrocarbons and their derivatives because we will discuss hydrocarbons and their derivatives in organic chemistry following are the few applications of inorganic chemistry inorganic chemistry includes the elements like metals non metals compounds like salts acid and base now what are the application of these metals non metal salt acid base in our daily life number first is metals metals like gold and silver we use gold and silver for uh, as a jewelry and for ornamental purpose we use copper in our electric circuit now number second one is non metal non metals are also elements so it include nitrogen and hydrogen we use nitrogen and hydrogen for the Uh, preparation of ammonia then we use ammonia for the preparation of fertilizer fertilizer are the substance which we use to increase the fertility of the soil now the third one is salts we have various type of salts but here we will discuss only two types of salt sodium chloride is also known as table salt we use sodium chloride for flavoring our food second one is sodium bicarbonate which we commonly called baking soda we use baking soda in our uh, bakery products like for the preparation of cake pastries etc look at the chemical formula of sodium bicarbonate it also contain carbon and hydrogen then why it is included in uh, we then why we study this in organic chemistry why we not study this in, in organic chemistry this is because the origin of sodium bicarbonate is not a living organism the origin of sodium bicarbonate are acid and bases that's why we discuss we will study sodium bicarbonate in inorganic chemistry now the fourth one are acids h2so4 is a sulfuric acid we use sulfuric acid in car batteries and generator batteries now the fifth one is bases sodium hydroxide we use sodium hydroxide for the preparation of soap detergent and various cleaning agents now what is the importance of inorganic chemistry inorganic chemistry is used in pharmaceutical industries construction industries chemical industries and food factories all these industries in all these industries inorganic chemistry is used now the last one is analytical chemistry oh, sorry a fourth one is analytical chemistry analytical chemistry look at the definition on page number 5 analytical chemistry deal with the study of qualitative and quantitative analysis of matter here two terms are used qualitative and quantitative analysis of matter what is mean by qualitative and quantitative analysis of matter first look at qualitative analysis qualitative analysis determine type or kind of a substance in a sample let's we take a um, sample when uh, we take a sample we don't know that what kind of what, what type of substances are present in it through qualitative analysis we find out the kind or type of substance in a given sample then we determine the kind or uh, type of a sample in a uh, substance in a sample then we don't know that how much the amount of substance are present in a sample then through quantitative analysis look at the definition of quantitative analysis determine amount of a substance in a sample and then we determine the amount of a substance in a sample through quantitative analysis let's take an example let uh, we uh, take a uh, example of walnut we don't know that the composition of walnut that what substances are present in a walnut the composition we don't know about the composition of walnut through qualitative analysis we determine the composition of walnut that walnut contain fat fiber proteins carbohydrates and iron through which uh, analysis through qualitative analysis we find out the type of substance in a sample but we don't know the amount of substance in walnut that how much fats fibers proteins carbohydrates and iron is present in 100 g of walnut through quantitative analysis we determine that 20 g of fats 2 g of fiber 5 g of proteins 4 g of carbohydrates and 6% iron is present in a 100 g of walnut through which analysis we determine through quantitative analysis we determine you have already uh, seen a nutrition facts on the food stuff like this 
on the vanilla custard pack look at the nutrition facts that 100 gram of cooked custard contain 110 kilocalories of energy now look at the which substances is present which nutrients is present in the uh, custard packer proteins carbohydrates sugar dietary fiber fats saturated fat and sodium all these substances are present in the custard pack now we determine this through the qualitative analysis now how much the amount of these substances are present in a hundred gram of cooked custard we determine the amount of this substance through quantitative analysis look at protein 3 gram protein is present in 100 gram of cooked custard carbohydrate 19 gram carbohydrate is present 14 gram of sugar is present 0 gram of dietary fiber is present 3 gram of fats is present 2 gram saturated fat is present and 50 milligram of sodium is present through analytical chemistry we find out the amount of these substances now other examples include amount of drugs in a blood sample of player if you want to determine whether the player take uh, the drugs or not through analytical chemistry we find out the amount of drugs in the blood sample of a player now number second one is we determine the quality of soil through analytical chemistry if you want to grow a plant in a soil then before the growth of the uh, before growing plants we uh, have to check the quality of soil through analytical chemistry we will check whether the soil contain a sufficient amount of minerals for the growth of the plants or not now number third one shelf lives of many medicines through analytical chemistry we find out we find out that after how many years the medicine will expire how for how much time um, we may uh, use it look at the uh, tablet here here the date is mentioned manufacturing date manufacturing date means that it will manufacture on November 2019 and it will expire after two years on November 2021 this is the shelf life of this medicine then the shelf life of medicines will uh, we will find out the shelf life of many medicines through analytical chemistry thank you